Hey guys, welcome to part 4 of how to make a split screen game in the Blender game engine. Today we're going to be um, adding in health bars and moving these sort of blood on the screen to the um, yeah, to an overlay scene. So it's uh, not in the way. Um, and yeah, we'll be doing hopefully some other stuff as well. In the last three videos we went and made two characters that can run around and shoot each other and hurt each other as well. But they both have unlimited health so it doesn't really do much. So to get rid of that we are um, going to add health bars. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, we're going to be using the system from uh, tutorials for blender3d.com. Um, when you go on the home page you can go to tutorials for 2.49 and we're just going to be using the um, setup from here so if you find any part of this confusing go ahead to there and we're pretty much doing the exact same thing so um, first of all what we're going to do is make a new scene so uh, click the plus button and then copy settings then we can add a camera, so shift A and add a camera then press alt R and alt G and um, move it up on the Z axis like so and then we can press 0 and um, shift F and zoom it out a bit and uh, something like that, that's good then we want to press shift A and add a plane now this is going to be the health bar, so we can call this um, health bar, and the first one's going to be for player one, so P1. Um, then we're going to give it a material, um, no specularity, and a just shadeless, no back facing, and just give it a red color like that. Then we're going to make this a bit smaller, and um, press SX and make it long um, and then just S to make it smaller and then SX and stretch it out like that and then um, you can press S again so you don't want it to be too big and then you can just move it up in the top corner here um, then we can press tab and go to vertices select mode and then press A to deselect and B and select those last two vertices, then shift S, uh, cursor to selected, then press tab to go out of better mode, T, and to bring up the toolbar, then origin to 3D cursor, then press T to hide it, and um, then we can go to down here on the timeline, go all the way to frame 100, then press I, insert scaling, then go to frame 0, and then press S, X, 0. So that takes all of that health away. And then press I, insert scaling. And so now we've, we have an animation of, um, yeah, the health bar going upwards. But if you press play, it's sort of slow at the start and slow at the end. So we want it to be even. So we can click here in the uh, F curve editor. We can click interpolation mode and linear and so now when we press play it's nice and even so um, then we can after we've finished that we can go ahead and add an always sensor and a property then we're going to add a property here and call it health as an integer with a value of 100 because that's how um, long the animation is so that's from the start of the health to the end then on this side we're going to add an action actuator and join that up with a with the always and then click property and select um, health bar player one and select the property health then minimize that, add another end controller and join that up to the property and then join that up to the action as well. You can make those smaller and in the property we're going to select change so if 
the health property is changed, then it's going to um, animate it. Um, so minimize that. Now we're going to add two message sensors. So one of them is going to be damage. Um, make sure you name the top of this one damage as well. And this one is going to be heal. And same with the bottom. Then we're going to add an expression and another expression and join those two up. And then we're going to add two properties, one to take away health and one to add health. So we're going to have to change them both to add and both the property health and join them up like that. And then this top one, the damage, it's going to, whenever the player gets hit by a bullet, it's going to add minus 25 to the current value. So um, it's going to take four sh shots to kill the other player. Um, for healing, it's going to add uh, five um, every second you aren't getting shot at. So, um, yep, minimize that. And then we can go here in the expression, and for damage, we can type in um, health. So when health is greater than zero and damage is equal to true, then it's going to um, take away minus 25 health. And if health is smaller than 100, and heal is equal to true, then it's going to heal him. So, um, say we have 95, that is greater than zero, so if you get shot at, it's going to minus health. However, if you are at zero, or say minus 10, that means that their health is actually lower than zero, so this isn't going to work. Now it'll stop the game from mucking up. The same goes for the bottom here. If your health is under 100, so say 95 again, then it's going to add health. But if your health is uh, already at like 100%, then it's not going to add anything because that will make you practically invincible. So, yep, that should work nicely. Now we're going to go and call this overlay. And then we can go to the normal scene and call it main. Then select this camera here, put an always sensor on and an overlay, so scene, and then add overlay scene and join those up. Then select overlay and make them minimized. So now when we press P, you want, you'll see a progress bar which is cool. Um, however, yeah, each player can still shoot each other and it just has this stuff popping up around the side of the screen and no real um, damage to the progress bar yet. So right now it's, I think, for player one here. We've made the progress bar. So currently when this character is getting shot, it has sort of uh, this blood stuff popping up. But, um, yeah, we want to get sort of rid of that and move that possibly onto the overlay scene as well and want the health bar working. So we're going to add a message sensor here and another one. And they're going to just be under player sensor. And then we can add an and controller and join that up. So, and then add a an NAND controller and join that up. And so when the player gets shot, then it's going to send a message to um, health bar player one. There we go. Um, and it's going to be the subject of damage, like we typed in before. And you can just type body in there. I'm not quite sure what it does, but it works. So just type that in. Then we can um, send to health bar player one, heal, when it's not being hit, so the NAND controller. And then just type in body here as well. And now we can press zero and 
drag this down, hold down shift and move it around, then press P, and when this character shoots this character, we see the health drop down, which is quite nice, but the healing, oh, we'll just wait for it. Nope, uh, health doesn't seem to want to come back. So, we are, we're going to have to add another collision sensor, and add a bullet, and this time invert it, so when the opposite of this happens. Then we can add an AND controller, join that up, get rid of that NAND controller. So it's pretty much this one here, but it's inverted. So we need it on true, so it's constantly checking, and then it can join that up. Now we want some delay in the healing, so it's not instant, so maybe 10. And then join that up with the AND controller and the heal. And now when we press P, we can test that out. There we go. So it's healing, but I don't know, that might be a bit fast for you. So turn up the frequency to 20 and press P. And we'll try that out. So, yeah, that's a bit slower. So I, I think that's a good sort of speed. I mean, two, if he's healing like that, you only need a couple shots. And, um, yep, health will go all the way down. So that's pretty cool, we got it working for the first player, now we just need one for the second player. So go to the overlay scene, press zero, and then um, press shift D, and then GY, and move it down underneath the red arrow, which I'm guessing is halfway. Then we can go to the main, and press P, just to check it's on the right sort of level, and it's still a bit high, so we'll go back to overlay, Select this one, move it up, and select that one, move it down, and go back to main, press P, and that's working quite nicely. Well, it looks good anyway, but unfortunately, well, if we try it out now, um, oh, this might work. No, so we have this character getting damaged, but the second character not. So, um, we're going to have to go back to the overlay scene, press zero, and with the other health bar selected, so we can change this, change this to health bar player two. When it gets that message, then, yep, that should work fine. So just change that to health bar player two, then go back to main, um, and select player 2 collision box then add a collision sensor a bullet just like the other one invert and add a hand controller join that up and add two message boxes or controllers actuators um, and so we want to add another hand controller and it's getting messy, so move it up. Um, join the original collision with the top one, and join that up to the first message, Then the inverted one, we can join up to the bottom. But we have to put that on true, and 20, just like the other one. So this first one is going to be health bar player two, and we're gonna send it the subject damage and that's going to be body and then it's going to be health so you can just type in HE and then health bar player 2 and type in heal and then just body and that should be fine so we'll test out that game one more time and first player shoots oh bottom player is losing health when this player shoots top player is losing health so yeah that's pretty cool now we just need to get these these sort of um, blood things popping up but on the overlay so they're not in the way so 
I think the best way to do that is select both of them and then press Control L while in object mode and then select overlay. So now if we go into overlay we have two of those objects here. Now if we go back to main we can press X and delete and if we go to overlay they'll both still be there. So now they're completely in um, yeah this mode. However if you see these dotted lines it means that they're parented so we have to press Alt P and clear the parent for each one. Yep, and then we can um, sort of line them up and then press RX90 and then select the other one, RX90 and then press 0 to go into camera view and now we just need to um, make it bigger. So the advantage that we use the grid um, on the overlay means that we can figure out where exactly halfway is of the screen so that was the red line so this is the second player I think just or it might be just over the red line this is the second player and that's the first player so if we sort of scale it just like so um, this will probably require a lot of tweaking but if you scale it so they're pretty close just SY like that. You can leave a margin if you're really not sure. But um, that should be fine. Then we're going to go into the material settings, select shadeless, and for the first one, we're going to min minimize these. And um, because they're on a different layer, it's not going to be able to um, pick up collisions. Um, so the only way you can send messages through um, different layers is uh, by a message sensor. So um, this is going to be useless here. So we can just get rid of those. Um, and same for the second one. Just delete that. Um, now we can call that one blood player 2. So P2 and blood P1. Then for this first one we're going to add a message and when it re receives a message um, uh, damage we might um, let's just say visible. So when it receives the message visible then it will or when both receive the message visible then it will be visible for a couple seconds. Then add a visibility sensor and join that up. Add a NAND controller, join that up, and add another visibility. So this one, then not visible, and join that one up. Um, yep, just pretty pretty basic. And then the same for the first or second one. So add a AND controller and a NAND controller. Then add uh, two visibility and one invisible, the NAND one, and like so. Then we're going to minimize those like that, and then, um, yeah, that should be working well. Go back to main and then select the collision box for the first player, and it can select or send a message when it collides with the bullet, so with the first one. It can send the message to blood player one, because this, this is player one, and then with the subject visible and body, um, then we select player two um, and do the same. So add another message, join that up to the first one, then blood player two and visible and body text. So if we press 0 and press P and then shoot one of the players. So here we go. Here's blood popping up on a screen. But it doesn't really seem, I don't know, it's a bit over the bottom. 
So we go back to the overlay scene and it didn't seem very right. Oh, we'll try that again, press P. And this player can shoot. And it's flashing up, but it's not for very long at all. So to make those last a little bit longer, we're going to have to go to player, oh, to the overlay, and we're going to have to add a timer to each one. So it's going to be game property, it's going to be called timer, and it's going to be an integer. So I make a new game property, timer, and that's going to be however long you want it to do the blood to be there, so maybe um, half a second. Um, yep, I think that's a good time. Then when that property is... So when the message visible comes along, then it's going to... The property is going to start the timer. But we need another one that is called start timer. Now this one only needs to be boolean, so true or false. So it's going to assign start timer to true. So when the start timer, so if we add another property on this side, when start timer is equal to true, then it's going to add a, um, well it's going to start the timer countdown. So we select true on here, and our property on this side, and add timer minus one. So, um, yep, that should work well. Then when the property timer is equal to zero, then it's going to, um, well firstly it's going to set the, it's going to assign start timer to false, because it doesn't need to be. Um, true anymore, and it's also going to make this invisible. So you drag that up there. Um, we'll just get rid of that nano controller and see how that works. So if we go to the main and then press P, and this player shoots this one. There we go. Half a second, except a second time. And the reason for that is because we forgot to reassign the timer as well. So what it's forgotten to do is add one more property. So go back to overlay, select the current blood thing and sign timer with 30. Just so we can keep the loop going. So we'll go back to main, press P, and then when this character shoots this character blood pops up for a nice long time. So um, that uh, health might be going up a bit fast, so you can change that from 5 to 1 easily if you'd like to, um, but I'm just going to leave it, I can't be bothered. Um, now we need to do the same for player 2, so we're going to add 2, 1 integer, 1 boolean, this one's going to be timer, and it was 30. This one's going to be um, start timer, and then we're going to get rid of that NAND controller and add a property. Um, so when start timer is equal to true, then it's going to minus or start minusing. Um, it's going to add to timer minus one and on it true. Um, now we've gone ahead of time and added in, um, we should have added in one more, so add a property, um, assign start timer to true. And make sure that's a capital letter there, and you've spelled it right. Um, then join that up to the original one, um, move that up, and Yep, so when that's true, then it's going to add the timer minus one. Then when the property timer is equal to zero, then it's going to add, an, going to 
it's going to make it um, invisible and it's going to also reset our two properties so it's going to reset start timer to false and it's going to reset timer to 30 um, and join those all up and minimize them just for space and so now if we go to main just p and oh turning the wrong way and we can press both shooting buttons that player is getting shot at but this one isn't and the reason for that is we didn't send a did we? I don't think we sent a message visible oh we did um, so go back to overlay and when message visible now you just have to check for stuff like spelling um, visible start timer um, do we turn oh turn back facing off that could have been a problem go 0p and try again so that one works, the bottom one works um, and there we go, top player works as well so yep yeah. um, there might be some problems where you might sort of catch the um, the health bar sort of on the, when, when you get shot at you see the blood sort of just underneath where it's meant to be um, but that will only be because you sort of got possibly the camera like that and you press P and it sort of tries to squish it up so make sure that our line is sort of always around um, yeah in the middle of the window so yeah let's give it a quick demo run so this player can do some running and get shot at and heal and then this player can do oh this player can do some running and get shot at and we'll just run into the line of fire oh and it's not working so we'll just try it one more time it might just be a bug um, Oh, so it's working that time. It's working the same. Yep, it just seems to be a bug. It will sometimes do that. If your games ever do muck up, just press um, escape, restart them. If it's still doing it, then it's probably an error. But, uh, yeah, so press Control S to save. Um, these player sensors are funny, so we're going to select player sensor 1 and call it player sensor 1. And then we can call this one 2 instead of 001. Um, so yeah, that's, um, I think that's all the basic mechanics done. So there, we've got the players shooting, they can hurt each other, um, and yeah, so that's all this boring stuff done. Um, now we can get on to the, uh, map design. So we'll probably be doing that, um, next tutorial. So look out for that, um, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Control S and we'll save it.